In the last video, I believe it was video number 36, we talked about quadratic expressions. Um, before we continue that discussion, a reminder, the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Okay, now this is where we left off in the previous video. We said that some matrix, actually a symmetric matrix, multiplied by a vector on its right and a column vector and a row vector on its left is what uh, is the definition for a quadratic expression. And then we wrote this in component form. Then in the last matrix, or the last, not the last matrix, but the last video, we sum this just to where n equals 2. And that gave us a quadratic expression with two variables then. The variables were, of course, x1 and x2, where x1 could correspond to x, x2 is y. Now, in this video, we're going to take exactly our same definition, only have it now where n equals 3. So then we're going to have a quadratic expression with three variables, x1, x2, and x3, or x, y, and z variables. That's what we want to consider in this video. So what we're going to be doing is, starting with the same definition, of course, this one, well then now we're going to take it to where n equals 3. When n equals 2, this gave us this expression. Now we're going to carry it on to where n equals 3. The mechanics is going to be exactly the same as we had in the previous video. We're just going to have more variables and more steps that we have to deal with. So here is our definition. Then if we have it going to n equals 3, we're going to have this 3 by 3 matrix times a column vector and times a row vector. Again, completely analogous to what we did in the uh, previous video. Now, here's our expression in component form. Let's get rid of this. Here it is, but as you saw us do in the previous video, we want to work with not just any square matrix, but with matrices that are symmetrical, meaning the off-diagonal elements have to be equal. So we want A12 and A21 to be the same, A13 and A31 to be equal, A23 and A32 to have the same values. So for the diagonal elements, let's just call these A, B, C. Then if we call this one D, this one will also have to be D. And if this is E, then this one will also have to be E. And if this is F, then this is F. So here we have it then arranged for a symmetrical matrix. Now what we have to do is the multiplications to see what kind of an expression this gives us. So let's move on with that. Here we have, again, a symmetric matrix times a column vector and times a row vector. And remember, I think we discussed this in video 7a, this times this, well, we could go across and down, across and down, across and down, or equivalently, it is this first element times the first column, plus the second element times the second column, plus the third element here, the third row, times the third column. And again, we discuss that at length. I think that was video number 7a. So now we have this times this row vector. This row vector has three members, x1, x2, x3. Remember how we do that. It's very straightforward. The first member here multiplies the first row. The second member 
multiplies across the second row. The third member multiplies across the third row. So let's look at that in more detail. Here is what we had from the previous page. Now we take x1, multiply across the first row. So we have x1 squared times a plus x1 x2 times d plus x1 x3 times e. Then continuing along exactly the same way, we'll have x2 x1 times d plus x2 squared times b plus x2 x3 times f. Then for our last one, we have x3 x1 times e, x3 x2 times f, and then x3 squared times c. So this gives us these three lines. Now we go ahead and just collect terms. So we have a1 times x squared, or a x1 squared plus b x2 squared plus c x3 squared, right here. Then we have d x1 x2, so we have two times that. e x1 x3, two times that, plus f x2 x3, two times that. Keep this in better focus. There, let's do that again. A, B, C, X1 squared, X2 squared, X3 squared, 2D times X1, X2, 2E times X1, X3, plus 2F times X2, X3. So, we have This expression, or we can rewrite it, x1 is x, x2 is y, x3 is z, we have this expression. This can be the equation for different types of quadratic surfaces. But where we began at, initially, we had back in the previous video, number 36, we had this expression, which we wrote like this. And so this is now in quadratic form, where we just have two variables, x and y. Now if we have three variables, x, y, and z, so we have this expression. This can be written in terms like this where we have, again, a symmetric matrix. We're not going to deal with these. We just wanted to show to you that how we, we're going to deal entirely with these expressions with only two variables, x and y. What we wanted to show to you is that by using our definition for quadratic expressions, by having n equals successfully higher numbers, we could have 4, 5, and so forth, we're going to generate more and more complicated expressions. We just want to kind of go through the mechanics to see how all that is done. Okay, now what we're going to do in the next videos is work with these expressions and take advantage of the fact that this is a symmetrical matrix and how we can take equations that might look fairly complicated and simplify them, taking advantage of the fact again that this is a symmetrical matrix. And that's what we'll start doing in the next series of videos.